I'm standing on. Why is anyone? <laughs> I don't know. Can't we fix this? I'm no, no. It's okay. I'm just gonna stand on tiptoes. I can't fix the fact that I'm short. Oh, well, it should be fixed. I, you know, Glenn McGrath slouches for me so that where it's not like the different heights. Glenn McGrath, Glenn McGrath, Glenn McGrath. I've heard a lot about him in the last year. I heard you guys are related. No, he's Glenn McGrath's. Glenn McGrath's wife think that we look like brother and sister. Not we, me and Glenn. We I don't mean, look like brother and sister. Of course we do. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just that uh, the mixed, uh, like, mixed <laughs> exactly. lineage. Yeah, that's all. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Would it be Indian mother, as, uh, uh, like English or Australian yeah. father? Or? Could be both, really. Yeah. I mean, I wanted to say something, but I just saw the cameras rolling, so I'll leave that for once the camera is turned off. I okay. have said a lot of things which I shouldn't say yes. on the camera already, but not this time. Okay. Do you want to do the hello and welcome this time? Yeah. Okay. We've got to speak loud. Because loud. Loud. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the good, the bad, and the ridiculous here in Brisbane. The first test is all over. England's hopes were dashed pretty early on in the day once uh, we saw the wickets fall of Joe Root and David Milan but uh, you sent in some nominations it's been a crazy day there has been a lot about today that has been extremely crazy we're gonna get into it with your nominations let's do this let's and, do this and, uh, basically the Sun is out so we don't have to worry about the light which means England have lost early. <laughs> Ridiculous. Route to promote album. Need to learn from this and come back stronger by the end of Ashes. I'll start with that one. Yeah. He didn't say that. He actually did not say that. Um, uh, maybe uh, he's looking for a new album, uh, <laughs> cover album name because for the. He was slightly spunky. You know, Joe Root, Mel, you, we've been to enough press conferences of his where whether they win or lose, he can sound a little. Uh, uh, I don't know how to put it. Uh, not mopey, but like he's um, he's very really understated. Let me put it That's that way. That's just Joe Root. It is just Joe Root. He sounds a lot like Joe Root. But today I thought he spoke really, really well. He didn't uh, use that line at all. Uh, and I think there were a lot of positives that England can take from this, says, despite the manner of their defeat. And more than positives, they can look at the Australian team and think, if we had played a few of our cards better, if we had taken some of our opportunities better, which is what he said, uh, they actually could have made a match of it and only and only because of that, despite the heavy defeat, they can look at this, uh, the rest of the series as more opportunities. If they can, you know, win those moments, uh, who knows, you can't put pressure on this Australia. This is not the Australia from 2013-14. This is not the Australia even from 2017-18. There are still, you know, vulnerabilities that can be made the most of and that's pretty much what Joe Root said. But having said that, just on that... Um, album uh, you know the the lead song in that album how do you think you'll sing that no you'll say i love cricket me i love it i love cricket just love batting in you know, the that song i think but uh, can i just establish one thing um we don't call players spunky in australia have you not been here long enough well actually no that's in england okay if this if anyone in england is watching it he didn't mean Never mind. Oh, really? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what spunky means in English. Oh, no, it's okay in Australia, but not in England. Cool. Joe Root, you're Just not leave spunky. it there. Sorry. You're not spunky leave it in there. Australia, but okay. Anyway. <laughs> uh, also from Ramanathan. Good. Melinda's tweets during coverage failure. Thanks for that. I felt a great deal of responsibility of that. I'm also going to bring in El Chapernos <laughs> related good, the Barat Heels combo. So while everything went to you know what, and we'll get into that without further nominations. Uh, but so while all that happened, everything's off the air, the world feed's gone down. And so what happens? Barat here has to do ball by ball commentary, <laughs> jumps on there like a pro with Ian Healy doing it for SEM because no, none of them are here. There's hardly anyone here. So all these people commentating have suddenly got no pictures. So I was doing the little bit I could with the tweeter, but I mean, that's that's more impressive. Well, I guess so. I mean, I just got a call from the producer in Melbourne and said, Bharat, you need to get into the box. And because my stint was only in the evening, uh, just doing some color. 
uh, and he said that you have to do ball by ball with fields. I have done some ball by ball uh, for the Sheffield Shield games, but I said, hey, it's just me talking anyway. I'll do it. I've heard enough of ball by ball. And I had a, I had a great time and uh, Ian Healy was great uh, as well. We have been spending a lot of time in the last four days, so that helped. Uh, but I, I was pulling off everything. I was talking about how it's all happening here at the Gabba. Oh, and no. I, was, I didn't say it in that tone, don't worry. Thank goodness. You know, I was making sure that people got they wanted, <laughs> what they wanted. So I had a great time and there you go. You know, it's these kind of uh, situations which lead to these kind of bizarre opportunities, if I can call <laughs> it that, or these bizarre circumstances where Australia had to hear me do Bobby Ball. There should be more of it. This could be the start of something big. Daniel Rodriguez uh, nominates as ridiculous, or maybe it's Daniel Rodriguez, like Jemima Rodriguez. I think so. I think it is Rodriguez. So that in India it's Rodriguez, Rodriguez but in yeah. other places it's Rodriguez. Rodriguez. So I don't know, Daniel, if you're a Rodriguez or a Rodriguez. Right to us. But but let us know. Um, uh, ridiculous, the power failure and technical issues. I mean, it was a freak today. So my understanding, yeah. uh, being where I was and and uh, sort of hearing quite a bit about what was going on. Was so that there's the you know the power to the trucks, the big OB trucks that are all in a compound down near the nets. Basically, there was a massive power failure. That's just really unlucky. In a normal situation, when there is a power failure, it automatically switches over to a backup generator or Jenny, as it's known in the business. For a, a bizarro reason, when the power outage happened, it flipped over to the backup Jenny, which failed. Jenny was having coffee. Jenny, Jenny was, was nowhere to be found. So that is really, I've, I just have never heard of that happening before. So I, I don't know whether it was just pure, like dumb, unluck, bad luck that all of that happened, but it, it just, it just doesn't normally happen. There are obviously other issues throughout this test where we so we haven't had RTS, um, that obviously the auto noble, uh, and so some of these were definitely compounded, as I said the other night, by the fact that oh, well, only 30 technicians were able to come in instead of the normal 100. So you, you can look at the decision to play it in Brisbane. It was always problematic. It, a lot of the same reasons why the, the Perth test is not going ahead. Uh, so you have to go back to that original decision. But to be honest, I feel really sorry for the, the, the poor technicians who are here and have been doing the job of three people each, every person. I, 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 they've done an amazing job to actually get as much, or get the product to where that they have been able to do. So it is incredibly diff difficult. That, and and I, I think the two things are separate. I think. Okay, difficult, people can't get in here, people can't move around, they're all in strict conditions. And then you have something that's just really, really unlucky, like a massive failure combined with a generator failing. Exactly, and just quickly on that, generally when you have a test match at the Gabba or anywhere in Australia, the, there are so many people, technicians and people working on the broadcast crew, they have their own catering. Yeah. But here I noticed that, uh, <laughs> you know, they are using our catering or we are all sharing the same catering area. And every day when we go to lunch, I see these uh, people in charge, I guess, bringing all these guys who work out there uh, and r are rushing them through their lunches so that they can go uh, back out there. I bumped into a guy and he was like, I do wish at some point I can take you, some of those, you journalists out there just to, for you to get a feeling of how difficult it is. Yeah, it was so bad out there today. <laughs> To heat wise, this is where technical stuff happens. We had to get, um, when I was doing stuff for BT Sport, the paramedics gave um, the sound guy ice packs because the microphones were so hot they were overheating that you couldn't touch them. You, you couldn't actually hold them because they were burning hot. So they had ice packs on them to cool them down so that we could, you know, so all, all sorts of stuff goes wrong. Uh, a lot has gone wrong this time for sure. Uh, Amitava says bad, very poor England collapse again. Um, and I'll bring the other one. Good, Lyon gets his 400th and Green his first wicket in this match after a long wait. Um, in some ways that batting collapse today felt worse than the batting collapse yeah. in the first innings because the, the batting, look, those things can happen. We've seen those happen before but when, you, when you have those kinds of batting collapses, but just after, doing so much hard work to get themselves into 
a, a decent position to make a game of it. And on so many of those shots, they were just poor. They were tired. They were very, some really soft wickets out there at a time when England needed all those players to, to dig in deep. It, it felt worse than the first innings one. Did you think so? Very much so. And you know, first innings, okay, Gabba, you won the toss. Clouds are out. The ball was doing a bit, not a lot. And is that shock value, right? You lose yeah. two, three quickly, and then you just uh, uh, run over. Uh, the position that England were in, like you said, Mel and I think Joe Root touched upon it as well. Uh, I asked him, I said, I don't want to use the term, but there were a few soft dismissals and he put it down to the extra bounce and you know how that always catches you here at the Gabba and which we've heard teams talk about every time they come here. So obviously it's not easy to adjust to. So uh, it would have hurt because they had a position or they were in a position to make a match of it. I'm not saying they would have still gone on to win it because you know once, once you're coming back from over 220 runs behind, it's just a matter of two wickets uh, at any yeah. point like we saw today for you to kind of lose your chance. But at yeah. least make a Australia sweat for it, put like 100 but, runs. Well, you put it there, put it this way. Like, if they'd, even if they put together a, a lead, managed to put a lead of 120. Yeah. I, you saw how quickly Alex Carey got out. Yeah. That, it could have been, not, not again, not saying they would have won, but yeah. it would have made things quite interesting and maybe a little bit uncomfortable. Australia. And going forward as well, like you know, you open a few more scars because there's uh, mm. what three day break between this one and the Adelaide test. Can't wait to get to Adelaide and finally take Mel to Adelaide. I, I, don't I get to meet Ollie! Indeed. Uh, so, uh, uh, and maybe uh, visit my hair salon. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's one of those. They could have really uh, taken a that kind of lead over some of the players but unfortunately it wasn't to be and uh, yeah I'm speaking was what was to be was Nathan Lyons 400 cricket. Oh yeah that one. And Pat Cummins was joking about it he said apparently he walked up to Nathan and said yeah looks like you're not going to get your 400 wicket this summer so maybe next summer and clearly it's not been something that you know has been really playing on his mind like I said yesterday it was just a matter of taking that first wicket yeah. uh, and uh, you know David uh, David Milan did something he didn't do much against Nathan Lyon yesterday which is use his feet uh, and you know the ball just bounced a little more than it did yesterday and uh, once he got that wicket uh, you ah, know gates open exactly he started bowling better he just started getting that zip back and look it's also an interesting dynamics and I asked him about this in the press conference he's gotten so reliant uh, and he was so reliant with uh, on Tim Payne and got so used to having that dynamic between captain wicket keeper uh, it would have been new for him as well when things weren't working out. Pat Cummins, like he himself admitted, doesn't know the nuances of spin bowling as well as, say, um, uh, Steve Smith would. And, you know, Steve Smith also getting into used to that role of being vice-captain. Uh, and the pitch was pretty flat yesterday. So all those factors put together. That's why I thought uh, my winner for the bad yesterday was Nathan Lyon bowling. But also, I did add the, add the rider that once he gets that first wicket, hopefully he does what he did today. Uh, and he's still out there, um, yeah. relaxing, just sitting on the on chilling a chair out. and chilling out, and now on a video call. So it's good, it's good to see him happy. Quick beyond Ent nominates ridiculously bad England's Red Bull strategy. They dropped their main players against New Zealand to prepare for the Ashes. They played a five-match Test series versus India. Only talked about Ashes, lost that as well. Hmm. Now they start the Ashes and still looked ashen-faced in four days. Well, technically, they didn't play a five. And they haven't Test lost series. that series yet. They haven't that lost, <laughs> yeah, they haven't lost this series. They haven't lost that in that this one, series. Yes. <laughs> Four tests, last one still to come. Um, do you know, but I think a lot of that, there, a lot of that, as far as talking about Ashes in an Ashes series, and you know that we always sort of say, we try not to do it, we're conscious of that. If you're doing media and you're being interviewed yeah. and someone asks you about the Ashes, you you answer them like you're not just gonna not answer the question um, because that's just what happens so we've got to like remember that, that the media and we're part of it we drive a lot of that because because people just do right and I know look ashes is ashes people do talk about it people I think people in England care more about ashes than people in Australia almost it's like you know really really big there so I think they do get asked about it an enormous amount half the time they think that they're just they're just being polite or something yeah no i agree and um, you know I, I make fun of it as well on and off but it, it's just it is it is really big the ashes and i don't think the players were sitting there during the india series they weren't no. afforded that opportunity though how based on how well india played 
to even think about the ashes. Uh, about selections, yes, I mean, England do make some bizarre decisions. We spoke about this on our show on the Zoom call back when England were in India about some of those decisions leaving Butler, like Butler would come and play the first two tests and he would go back and Johnny Besto would leave Sri Lanka, go to England, come to India, play it. I mean, they do things very differently. They've done that uh, with their other formats as well. I guess it's become the English way. Um, Particularly in COVID, I think. Particularly in COVID, especially, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, I still think it was not a bad call to rest Anderson and Broad here. Yeah. Jack Leach was always a risk and Joe yeah. Root actually blamed himself. He said that maybe I said, too many attacking fields to Leachy, and uh, you know he called him Leachy. I will not call him Leachy, but I uh, <laughs> I'm just quoting him. And maybe you know uh, Australia came out of the plan. You know what this reminded me of, though, Mel, uh, and this hits me a little uh, too close to home. The way uh, they went after Leach was very similar to how Hayden and Langer went after Bodley Karthik uh, in the 2003-04 wow. uh, Sydney Test. And I remember Karthik by telling me later that they had planned to go after him because he bowled so well against them in the one-day series in India before that. So they said the best chance we have is to go after him. And it kind of reminded me uh, of the, the, just in terms of strategy and approach. And it hurt. Anna nominates Pat Cummins. Uh, this is good. Pat Cummins is captain on point. Travis Head's form gives a solid middle order. Um, I mean, yeah, obviously things did go pretty well for Pat Cummins as a captain. Uh, overall, first test match, you win, that's okay. I think there's still probably times when he's going to be tested a lot more as a captain than he was here. So, so you know, good start, great, everything. There, there were things that went his way. He made some good decisions. But let's, let's like, let's just, let's just let him get into it, I think, probably there as well. Um, and Travis Head, Look, this is his opportunity. He can't just do it once. I think he needs this. This series for him is, is a one. It's for one for him. More than in past years, it feels. This is a one where Travis Head, there's been so much invested in him. His leadership qualities, everything else. Um, that cricket in Australia has invested so much hope in Travis Head. Uh, and I just think that this series really is his, his opportunity to really make that middle order position his own. Yeah, and I, I really love the way he batted yesterday morning. Even though you know, it was yeah. incredible when he made the 100 in a session the previous evening. I thought he looked so much more in control yesterday and it put a lot of pressure on the bowler. Uh, and I think, yeah, like you said though, consistency is what they're looking for from him. Yeah. And consistency is what Travis Head is looking uh, out for for himself. He's spoken yeah. a lot about that this summer. Uh, so hopefully he comes good. I have you know seen a lot of him in the last three years now doing similar things in the Shield at the Shield level, but how good was it to see two South Australians in there? And today there were three South Australians on the field because Henry Hunt, who opens for the Redbacks, was also out there. Uh, so yeah, that felt good. You know, I, now I have this connection with this team. I, I, you know, I see them train, I see them play, I commentate on them, so it feels good to see them. Um, and Rogerio's left peg nominates is good. Ollie Robinson looks like he'll cause problems this series. On the downside, that means we'll probably <laughs> drop him. I wrote a piece, you can go and check it out on Sporting News about the difference between England fans and Australia fans and the media and just how, you know, one bad day, it's like, it's like England fans have been crushed and hurt so badly that they can't be positive. And that's not all I know, but it's a real trait. Whereas Australian fans are much more bullet, ah, get it on, ah, all, all that. That's yeah. basically, isn't it? Um, so, you know, that they've had, They've had a really good day, generally, a really good sort of couple of sessions. They've had a couple of really bad ones. Uh, it's the first test, Gabba. It's happened to a lot of other teams as well. Uh, look at this, it's, it's really up to them. They've got some good players, like you said. They've got things they could do. How, how different could this have been if, if Dave Warner, if they'd taken, you know, a number of chances to uh, get David Warner out much earlier than they did? So sliding doors and all that in cricket, I, I don't know. Uh, Ollie Robinson himself, absolutely fantastic. I thought overall his performance was really good. He's impressed a lot of people here. And I kept saying before then, it was always gonna be an intriguing thing mm. for me, just how well he would do out here. Quite a few people said he doesn't, you know, he can nip the ball around a bit, but it, he doesn't have the pace. He showed he didn't need the pace, I think. I, I think he bowled beautifully. Um, and I don't think they'll drop him. I, I don't. 
I, I mean, he might not be able to play five tests because of fatigue. Yeah. But but I, I don't think he'll be dropped for not performing. I think the, the only way he doesn't play is, is if, you know, there's they have to rest him, essentially. Oh, absolutely. And he's used to bowling long spells. Adelaide, you love to play there because Jason Gillespie is coach at Sussex. Uh, I don't know what the strikers are doing, but hopefully uh, Jason Gillespie is there to watch it. I would love to see that. Uh, and uh, and uh, Rogerio's left back, thank you for all your other nominations as well. <laughs> uh, you know, we did consider a few um, politically correct ones, but uh, <laughs> some of the politically incorrect ones we really enjoyed. So thanks yes, for that. Yes. But yeah, I mean, he's been super impressive like we spoke mm -hmm. yesterday. Uh, and yeah, I don't see him going anywhere unless he did struggle uh, late in the day on day two. two so yeah. uh, hopefully he pulls up better and uh, yeah. I think he'll have a good season. Yeah. Okay. Time for our winners. Butter is the goodest thing of the day. Uh, the goodest thing for the day, uh, I think, was Nathan Lyon because uh, you know there was so much pressure on him coming into uh, today's play after the day he'd had. He did not bowl poorly, but he just looked a little ineffective. Thanks to Joe Root, we spoke a lot about Joe Root yesterday, uh, and he spoke about Joe Root as well today. How well he played him. Uh, but it was just, we kept saying it was just that one wicket yeah. and once he got that first wicket, uh, I thought he really got that zip back, he, he just got that spring back in his stride uh, and that's the person Nathan Lyon is. I asked him, after 100 tests and after 400 test wickets, are you still the same nervy guy? He's like, I'll always be nervy because I'm nervous not because of failure or getting hurt, but I'm nervous for uh, about, you know, what my, my boys, I'm nervous for them, my like, you know, my teammates and what it means for me to play for my country. So that was pretty sweet. But I, I think overall Nathan Lyon did that and you know gave us a day and a half uh, off. So thank you, Nathan. Anya, Gary. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh. What is no? Uh, Bharat, what was the baddest thing of the day? Hey! <laughs> uh, the baddest thing for the day was just how England just blew away a great opportunity to. Uh, bring the ashes back to life for the second day running <laughs> you know we all spoke about the ashes were dead or the series seemed dead after mm -hmm. day two and they gave us some hope that uh, there might be some uh, i was going to use the word spunk again there would, might be some fizz in this series and yeah once they lost david malan joe root and another wicket before the second new ball even came in fact i thought they lost all four wickets before uh, australia took the second new ball it was just gone it just was blown away uh, which means that like in Australia I have won handsomely at the GABA again and we'll hear talk now about is it 5-0, is it 4-0? 6-0. 6-0 even till England do something uh, yeah. which not many people are expecting them to do. Uh, hopefully they do and keep the series alive. That's what we're here for. Yeah. And uh, the, the ridiculous assist thing of the day. There were like a handful of people in Brisbane. She's undergone 14 days of quarantine. There are only two more people, Jeff Lemon and Graham, who've done that. Philip Brown has come all the way from England and done 14 days quarantine. Uh, I was lucky enough to come here, but I still had to do one day of isolation because I had to get a COVID test. I came from Adelaide. Uh, and it, which meant that for those eight minutes, or was it 18 minutes, it was only... No, it was more than eight. It was, it was more. 80, yeah, maybe 18 to 20, 25 minutes. About 25. It was just us who got like a 360 degree view of what was happening. Nobody outside <laughs> the GABA or, or actually outside the GABA, not even Brisbane, knew what was happening here. It felt like cricket back in the 1930s and 20s where <laughs> you could just say whatever you wanted to say. I did on air. So. I, I think you should have been doing the sound effects of any of the old sound oh, effects yeah, of the bat with the and the ball. And the, well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Miss the trick. Anyway, that's it. That's it from us from Brisbane. Uh, we're going to Adelaide. Uh, so we will see you then. We can't wait. Uh, until then, yeah, take your phone. That's your phone. Okay. So I can <laughs> do that. Uh, until then, look after yourselves. Enjoy yourselves. Stay safe. We are going to see you soon. Bye.